tonight. Tragedy at the races. 45-year-old man killed in horrific crash at the North Sound Raceway. Meanwhile, two children among four people injured in a crash in Lightfoot Saturday night. A message of inspiration from the final pair of roars to complete the 2019 Talisker Whiskey Atlantic Challenge. And more details emerge about controversy over Guyana's regional and general elections. The ABS Evening News begins now. The local evening news is brought to you by Nagico, local agents, Bryson's Insurance. Good evening. Welcome to the evening news on ABS Antigua's News Authority. And a well, warm welcome to those of you joining us via Facebook Live and via our website, abstvradio.com. I am Sherilyn Beza. We begin on a sad note this evening. Tragedy at the North Sounds uh, Raceway is our top story this evening. A family is in mourning and the nation in shock following a deadly accident there Saturday evening. 45-year-old Marcus Williams died on impact when the Honda EG Civic he was driving plunged into rock hundreds of miles away from the end of the raceway. Williams was testing and tuning the vehicle when the tragic accident happened. It left a pall of grief and shock hanging over the facility on the first of two days of activities at the raceway in memory of Brian Kelsey. Police Commissioner Atlee Rodney says intensive investigations will be carried out. We will continue to dialogue with the organizers of the race and also the investigators on the scene. We will be speaking to the fire rescue persons who arrive on the scene very early and also the officers who have been investigating this matter thus far. So it's early stage and we will just continue to um, pursue the different leads and get a full understanding as to what would have caused the death of a young man in that um, under, under those circumstances. He also extended condolences to members of Williams' family. It's a very family. horrific scene because we know racing can be a dangerous sport, but then to lose a life at this stage and at his age is very unfortunate and our sympathy goes out to the family. The incident has plunged the racing community into mourning as they acknowledged Williams' contribution to the sport. He has been regarded as a veteran in the sport of motor racing. Meanwhile, the organizers decided to push ahead with today's final day of the event. In other news, four people, including children, have been hospitalized following a two-vehicle collision last night. Police report a Sangwong, a Sanyong van and a Toyota pickup crashed head-on at Lightfoot Main Road around 10 p.m. Images from the crash show extensive damage to the front end of both vehicles. The two female drivers and the children aged six and three years have been taken to hospital for treatment. The extent of their injuries is not known at this time. Police are investigating the incident. And the 35th and final team has completed the 2019 Talisker Whiskey Atlantic Challenge. ABS's Jessica Russell on the, is on the epic journey by Row Off the Wall, which took almost three months. Team Row of the Walls entry into Nelson's Dockyard brought an end to the 2019 Telisco Whiskey Atlantic Challenge and made history. Sarah, the young lady standing right here. Today, you are officially the oldest woman to have crossed any ocean. The team is made up of Sarah Brewer and Anne Prestige. Brewer says how she feels after completing the challenge. If you added 20 years onto the way I feel right now, um, I, I, I think probably that might sum up the aches and pains, but, but mentally, I feel like a 20 year old. <laughs> completed the Atlantic crossing on the eve of International Women's Day. She has this word of advice for women. Don't let anybody say that you can't do something. If you feel the urge to do something which is extraordinary, follow that dream. Because it's terrible to spend the rest of your life thinking, I only wish I'd done that. 
The 2019 Talisco Whiskey Atlantic Challenge started in December at La Gomera. Teams rode across the Atlantic to raise money for various charities. Jessica Russell, ABS News. Meanwhile, a member of the two-man Antiguan team preparing to participate in this year's Talisco Whiskey Atlantic Challenge says preparation has already begun. Well, we've been in the gym, been in the gym um, three times a week. Um, also, we've been out on the boat because we, we recently got our boat and we would have um, maybe about a little over 50% paid for it. So we're still you know, awaiting sponsors to help us to be able to complete the payment because without the boat, we can't go anywhere. Travis West says that the team has already set a goal to complete the race in under 40 days. West plans to make what has been called the world's toughest row with Joseph Nunes. And the British High Commission will be using its platform to empower the young women of this country. In her International Women's Day address, Resident British Commissioner Lindsay Thompson says one young lady will have the opportunity to spend the day shadowing her as she goes about her diplomatic duties. Women between the ages of 18 and 25 are asked to post a 90-second video on social media outlining gender equality challenges in this country as well as how they would best address them. Email a link to that post to RBC dot antigua and barbuda at fco.gov.uk that's rbc dot antigua and barbuda at fco.gov.uk the competition ends on the 31st of march now amaya king is the 2020 rotary club antigua's book reading competition rakib aparicio has our recap the Grace Christian Academy student edged out 12 of the competitors on Saturday to claim top spot. Students read from story passages as well as coronavirus public service announcements. Coronaviruses, or COV, are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases. She won a fully loaded desktop computer compliments the Rotary Club, a junior savings account from the Antigua Commercial Bank, and a gift certificate from Happy Kids. Joining her in the winner's circle is Jaleesa Graham from Sunnydale Primary School in second place. But the worst, the very worst, the worst, worst, don't ever make a deal with the devil. Adrian Clark, representing Temple Academy, rounds out the top three. Avoid close contact with anyone showing symptoms of respiratory illness such as coughing and sneezing. This is the fourth year where a Grace Christian Academy student took first place in the competition. Rakib Aparisi reporting for ABS News. And members of the local orders of honor gathered at the St. John's Cathedral Sunday to celebrate Commonwealth Day 2020. The members were adorned in their official medals as decorations for the service. The day, which will be officially observed Monday, is annually marked with events including flag, flag parades, church services, poetry mornings, and dance performances across five continents. This year's event, events are centered on the theme, Delivering a Common Future. It seeks to highlight how the 54 member countries in the Commonwealth are innovating, connecting, and transforming to help achieve some of its biggest goals, such as protecting natural resources, and boosting trade. Queen Elizabeth II, as head of the Commonwealth, will join Secretary General Patricia Scotland at Westminster Abbey Monday for a multi-faith service to celebrate the day. Now, the, Guyana, the results of the 2020 Guyanese elections remain in limbo, pending a hearing Tuesday at the High Court in Guyana. Chief Justice Roxanne George Wiltshire will preside over the case, which was brought by applicant Rees Holidar. The application seeks to compel election officers to comply with stipulations in the Representation of the People's Act before declaring the election results. Returning officer for Region 4, Claymont Mingo, Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield, and the Guyana Elections Commission, or GCOM, have been named as respondents in the case. Members of the Opposition People's Progressive Party Civic, or PPP, says returning officer Mingo did not, 
did not follow a verification process mandated by Section 84 of the Act. PPP's General Secretary Barrett Jagdeo tells ABS News of the 10 regions in Guyana, only Region 4 failed to follow the procedure. He says his party was ahead by approximately 55,000 votes when the other nine regions completed the process. According to Jagdeo, the verification process started in District 4 but was subsequently aborted. What happens is that all the political parties sit in a room. The RO will go to the statements of poll that each party had signed after the count. He'll call those out and then people will check their sheets. And if everything is fine, they move on. Miraculously, they declared about 3,000 votes, 4,000 votes more than the PBP. So they were waiting to see what the margin is. We uploaded to the public all of our statements of poll since Monday. You can go on our website and you can see the tallying of those statements of poll and you will see that APNU won this region. They got 114,000 votes and we got 80,000 votes. In contrast, the results declared by GCOM put the PPP's total at approximately 77,000 votes and the incumbent, APNU, at 136,000. The conflicting results have led to both parties declaring victory. The applicant wants the court to declare GCOM's declaration in, is a breach of the act and is unconstitutional, null and void, and of no effect. The action also wants the court to set aside the votes declared for Region 4 and prevent the body from declaring the results until the election officials comply with the law. Sunday, the judge ruled the High Court had a jurisdiction to hear the matter and says a prima facie case exists for the matter to be heard. The case is set for 3 p.m. Tuesday. And that's how we conclude the national segment. Please stay tuned. Joel Rain is up next with the sporting developments. At Najiko.